All right, everyone, I think it's about that time so we can get started. Um, welcome, first off, to all of our attendees. Um, thank you also to all our presenters for, for stopping in. Um, tonight, the purpose of the presentation is to go over our Middletown High School career and technical information. Um, for students who are either Middletown High School students and might be thinking about joining a pathway, um, Gaudet Middle School students who are coming up to us next year and might be thinking about adding that as part of their course selection process, or students from surrounding school districts um, that might be thinking about taking a jump to, to Islander Nation. So like I had said, I appreciate you all being here. Um, we have a couple of presenters that are still on their way, um, but we're gonna get started for the, for the interest of time and to honor everybody's time. So um, to start tonight's presentation, uh, I wanted to just click here and let everybody know that for the purposes of, of sharing this information with other people that might not have been able to attend tonight, um, we are gonna be recording. Uh, we'll be using a webinar for, uh, form, format, excuse me. So if you do have questions throughout the presentation, if you could just type them in the chat box, um, that would be most helpful. Um, otherwise, if you could just hold questions till the end of the presentation, uh, we will open it up to the audience as time goes on. Um, to to allow people in to, to ask their questions and, and get things answered and then if you have a question that comes up after tonight's presentation if you would like to send an email out or give a phone call to the high school we'll be sure to give you that contact information so that you're able to do those types of things uh, that being said a couple of people that are on the call tonight i just want to make sure we start with introductions i myself am dr jeff heath i'm the principal at middletown high school i'm also the cte coordinator here in the building uh, on the call tonight, we have Mr. Dennis Soares, our assistance principal. We have Mr. Louis Oliveira, who's our career education and unified arts department director. We'll have Mr. Kevin Zahm, who is on his way. He's the math, science, and physical education department director. We also have our talented guidance staff, Mr. James Williams and Ms. Christine Clancy on the call. In addition to these individuals, we have some program-specific faculty. Um, Mr. Fenster may or may not be joining us. Hopefully, he's able to log on later. We do have Mr. Alan Waite here, who's another one of our engineering pathway teachers. Uh, we have both of our computer science teachers, Ms. Ann Larson and Ms. Gail Sullivan McCune. And on the way as well, we have Mr. Jason Douglas, who's our biomedical faculty member, um, who will be here to present, as I said, later on as well. So to start, just a brief conversation around what career and technical education is. So recent federal and state initiatives have had a major push for career and college readiness. You probably have heard that phrase if, if you've turned on the news with education anytime within the last three to four years. Um, many instances we talk about this with common core state assessments and, standardized, and standards and things of that nature um, and standardized testing for that matter. Um, in addition to those things, uh, Career and college readiness also relates to the skills, techniques, and dispositions that students uh, and soon-to-be graduates would, would be leaving high school with. So the state of Rhode Island, along with every other state in the country for that matter, um, it dedicates a lot of money, resources, time, and research to these types of programs. And how do we basically prepare our students for the jobs of tomorrow and make certain that they have transferable dispositions that they can use across a variety of, of pathways or job, jobs or even academic pursuits um, as they graduate high school. So as you can see, some of the bullet points here related to what is career and technical education, we have providing specialized programs that target up and coming job markets in Rhode Island and beyond. Um, one of the analogies I like to think of here is you know, one of the biggest jobs that was out there when, when I graduated college um, was social media marketing. And in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, if you were to tell an individual that they were going to go into social media marketing at that time, I mean, social media wasn't a thing, it didn't even exist at that point. So we're trying to get ahead of that curve with these types of programs and teach those dispositions that kind of anticipate what the next up and coming jobs will be both in our region and then nationally as well. Um, schools electing to offer one or more pathway programs to help foster the needs of student, student skills and dispositions that need to be successful in the job market. That's also another goal of career and technical education in our state and beyond. Add an emphasis on real world and experiential learning, so the hands-on types of activities that many students thrive for um, as, as their post-adolescence and, and young adult years. 
Um, and then finally, focusing on transferable skills that increase student viability no matter what their future path is. So when we talk about career and educate, technical education, it's not just the, the stereotypical woodshop you know, that many of us experienced in our middle school and high school days. Now there's a lot of technology that's involved with these types of, of pathways and initiatives. Um, a lot of forward thinking and progressive education techniques that are utilized that really make CTE education you know, some of the cutting edge um, pedagogy, teaching and, and learning experiences that we have in our public high schools nowadays. So you might be sitting there in the audience and asking if you're in the right place in the first place. So just to help kind of alleviate any concerns that might be out there, who's this presentation for? This presentation is for middle school students set to attend MHS this upcoming school year. Students that are currently taking pathway courses, but maybe not maybe aren't committed to a specific pathway. Maybe they took it as an elective or to dip their toe in the water and are just a little bit more curious about taking that added jump to, to committing to a pathway. Students who are not currently enrolled in CTE pathways or programs, but may be interested that are MHS students. And then also, as I said earlier, students from surrounding school districts. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to our assistant principal, Mr. Soares to talk a little bit about our school demographics. Hey everyone, so this, so this uh, slideshow is, is a snapshot of what Middletown High School is as far as numbers wise and a couple of other items. So our current enrollment is 585 students as of a couple of days ago. Obviously that fluctuates one or two students per year based on students moving in and out of the district in, in different types of situations. Our average grade size currently is 146. Our average class size by numbers is 12 students to one. Doesn't mean every class is 12. We're gonna have, we'll have some classes that might be less than 10 per particular pathway that we need to run to fulfill uh, our students' needs and some other classes might be at 20. But the average class size right now is 12 to one. Not average CTE class size currently is 14 to one. So we currently have 79 full-time faculty at Middletown High School, and that fluctuates, give or take two teachers, depending on enrollment, but that pretty much stays steady uh, th throughout our, that has been steady throughout the years. So you offer advanced placement courses, uh, courses offered in the science department, math department, social studies, humanities department. We have AP courses in world languages, English, arts, and computer sciences. And we're always looking to grow and develop new AP programs. There are times we have AP classes run certain years and other AP classes running different years depending on student interest. We also currently have 14 interscholastic league sports offered at Middletown High School. Alongside that, numerous extracurricular club activities that students can participate in. So speaking of clubs and extracurricular uh, activities or offerings, here's a list of some of the clubs that we offer. We didn't have enough room in the slide to name every club. And in fact, we are always looking for nominations or suggestions on new clubs based on student interest. And uh, if, any, if any student would like to start a new club uh, with Dr. Heath and I would love to ask is just have someone um, see us about that. I just, kidding. I just, I just had to mute someone. Um, so, so here are our athletics at Middletown High School. Now, if you, if you don't know anything about Middletown, I'm going to tell you right now, Middletown bleeds blue. We are Islanders. We love sports. We love the games. Most importantly, we love seeing our, our students out there representing our school, wearing that blue and white uniform that says Islanders of Middletown on it. There's something said about that when you're standing, especially as an assistant principal, okay, when I'm, when I'm standing out in, in, in the crowd and I'm watching our, our, our men and women uh, represent not, not just our school, but our, our community <clears throat> um, in, in a really – athletic professional and uh, pride filled way it, it, it speaks volumes so if you do uh, if you are fortunate enough or if you do uh, intend on joining us here at Middletown High School next year these these are our sport options options currently so we, we have a wide variety of sports and we're very competitive we play in competitive divisions as well and um, most importantly the kids have fun the kids have fun. They have, they have fun doing it. And our coaches are great. Our athletic director is, is fantastic. And if anybody has any questions regarding the athletic, athletic program, I would recommend contacting Karen Massaro 
and uh, her email information is on our new website. <clears throat> so some academic offerings uh, at MHS, we offer over 100 courses across 10 academic departments. Below are some of the unique courses that we offer outside our graduation requirements. Um, this year, the, the department directors, alongside the principal and myself, worked really hard on trying to generate new courses to, to expand our course offerings to, to, to offer the students more variety. So we may, you may see some classes that are offered on the odd years and some classes that are offered on the even years, but that's so that way we can maintain capacity. But below, you, you'll see some of the really original uh, type courses that you might not find in other school districts that students can take care of. For example, one that sticks out at me is fake news in English. I kind of wish I had one of those courses when I was, when I was a uh, student at, in, in high school. I wonder, wonder how that would have been. And th this going down, down the list, environmental science, meteorology, oceanography, financial math, where students uh, can, can learn how to balance a checkbook and, and learn about finance, uh, financial situations, uh, CDs, IRAs, savings accounts, things like that. Uh, mortgages, what that looks like. Art studio, home repair, which Dr. Heath alluded to in a previous slide. French, Spanish, and, and there are a ton more offerings in our um, program of studies will be eventually uh, out digitally for the first time. Dr. Heath's been working very hard on, on producing that to make it more user-friendly so that way teachers and, and teachers, students and families can, can work together and go through the program of studies in a more di digitalized format. And uh, I'm looking forward to that coming out. So I'm gonna hand the mic over to Dr. Heath, who's gonna talk about AP courses and honor academic offerings. Thanks, Mr. Soros. So, um, we had alluded to this a little bit earlier. Mr. Source had just described some of our general course offerings across our, our 10 different content areas. Um, he'd also mentioned that we have a variety of AP courses. This gets a little bit more uh, drilled down, I guess you would say, in regards to what types of AP courses we do offer routinely here at Middletown High School. Um, and to be clear and transparent, um, the vast majority of these courses do run every school year, um, but we do take pride in basing our student schedule on student interest. So some of these things do fluctuate depending on which students choose or how many students, I should say, choose um, individual courses throughout the, throughout the schedule, whether they be honors level, uh, college career prep level, or advanced placement level. Any of those three levels are, are very much contingent on how many students elect certain programs and, and kind of are able to organically make their own schedules. Um, so in addition to actually labeling the courses, I think it's really important to highlight if you're somebody who's either in district or thinking of attending our district, um, we don't only offer a lot of these AP courses, we're super successful in them. Um, so if you're not familiar with the College Board AP program, uh, one of the benefits of taking those level courses is that in many four-year institutions across the country, if you score a three out of five, or higher on your AP exam at the end of the school year, um, many of those courses can be exempt from college, college transcripts essentially. So if a student scores say a three in AP chemistry and then decides to attend Rhode Island College in the fall, you know, well, when the student goes to Rhode Island College, they'll see in that admissions office that the student part participated in and passed AP chemistry at the high school level, and they'll automatically put a check mark in that box as, as fulfilled for the Rhode Island College graduation requirements. So while that's also helpful when you're picking those college courses, if that's the route that you choose as a student, um, where it kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility on what you take year to year in your post-secondary career, uh, the other component of that is it saves you some, some schedule. Um, because generally speaking, a college course at the state level would probably run a student about $900. Um, many, many times those are covered by student loans and grants and scholarships and things of that nature, but sometimes they're not. So, you, I mean, I used to like to think of this um, when I was a teacher in the classroom that, that, you know, if you can score a three or higher on some of these exams, you're essentially saving yourself 900 bucks every time you do it. And that's, that's on the low end. If you go to a privatized institution, and again, you're going college in this route, um, it could be a whole lot more than $900 per class. So the fact that 72% of our students who are taking AP tests as of last year are scoring a three or higher on their AP exams is something that we're super proud of. And it really speaks to the, 
the professionalism and the skill of our classroom teachers, um, that seven out of 10 of these students that are taking these high level exams are passing them. Um, and, and as a result, not having to take these classes in college and being able to take additional coursework that might be able to, to fulfill their interests. So I think that that's something that's, that I as a building principal are really proud of, but I know that our department directors and teachers, um, especially at the AP levels are really proud of as well. So at this point, I'm gonna pass it over to, to um, Mr. Williams, who's one of our guidance counselors to talk a little bit about our special programs and clubs here at the high school. Make sure I'm off mute. Um, yes, we do have the Fre uh, Freshman Anchor Academy, um, and that's basically the ninth grade, and the way that works is they have a certain group of teachers that work with the students, and that uh, gives them um, a good head start on how the academics works at the high school, and then, you know, moving on after, after their freshman year. Uh, we also have a, a National Honor Society, which we're also looking into um, getting some of those students with community service, which is also a requirement for the high school um, by the time they graduate. Um, we all have the peer tutoring program, which is helping students that might need additional support um, in say like the English or math areas. Uh, the Beyond the Bell is our, uh, is our term for our credit recovery. It's a um, program for that. For students that uh, may not have done um, all that well or struggle in a specific um, class, and um, again, that's also to help recover the credit, so that can go towards graduation. Again, there's the, uh, we call the Islanders Committed, and that's a group of adults um, and students that wish to join. That is, um, it's, a, it's an awareness of drugs and alcohol um, to help other students to either, to either get away from that path or help prevent that path. And they also work in conjunction with the, uh, the, uh, the town council, Middletown Town Council. Uh, the student government, student, um, student, um, yeah, the, uh, the the group of students that come together and help to make decisions for um, whether it's uh, pep rallies or um, fundraisers, what have you, and they help run the uh, the, uh, the decision making with the, the staff throughout the school. Uh, we have the comprehensive special education program for students that have IEPs and need additional supports with the special ed. Um, and then we have the um, English language learners, which is also um, the students. We have many students that come from um, other walks of life outside the United States um, that come in that all, have all different levels of English speaking and some of them that don't speak, but we help get them through that path and onward all the way through high school. Okay, I get to jump in here. Um, we wanted to share some of the things that we're pretty proud of here at MHS with you. Um, some of our accolades that um, we've received over the past few years. Um, we are rated a, as a four-star school by the Department of Education. We are also ranked 13 out of 64 for US News, um, high schools in Rhode Island. We have a positive three-year trend in our SAT scores, as well as a positive three-year trend in both AP scores and the number of tests that are taken at our school. So we're pretty proud of those things. The next slide also has some things we're pretty proud of as well. Uh, many of our Islanders have gone on to many different um, colleges as well as branches in the military and other trade type schools. You can see here a list of different post-secondary options that our students have this kind of followed on this path after they graduate from MHS. So you can see we have a lot of local Rhode Island schools um, as well as the different branches of the military. And you can see that we've had some, school, some students go to Tony and Guy's School of Cosmetology, as well as um, MTTI in Seekonk. So we have lots of different paths that our students have chosen to take when they do graduate. So there are many, there are, um, like Mrs. Clancy's uh, talking about MTTI, New England Institute of Technology. Those are some of the trade schools that, um, that you know, are heavily on the technology. And for the, um, for the, the, the students that want to get into maybe like um, either carpentry, computer uh, repair, and even elect electrical and piping. So there's all sorts of different type of um, education throughout this. And this is just a few of the many schools that um, students have been accepted to 
and continue on. And some of these students have actually come back and told them about their stories, about their support for Middletown High School, and um, <clears throat> how it helped get through this, this, uh, this next level of education. I think the, the guidance department, Ms. Clancy and Mr. Williams won't say it themselves, but uh, I'll say it for them, that they do an unbelievable job in, in not only guiding, but counseling students throughout their four years at MHS um, to really you know, drive an individualized look at, at where they wanna go. So we do have some high powered academic students and families where Brown University and Cornell and Princeton are, are kind of the end game. Um, and that's great for some people, not all. Um, we also have, you know, different families who are into military or, you know, technical careers, and it, we value every learner at Middletown High School equally. Um, it, whatever it is that the individualized student and family would like to see as their post-secondary goals and options, we're here to support that. So I want to be crystal clear about that. And, you know, I consider myself as a building principal, as a first-year building principal, really lucky to have Mr. Williams and Ms. Clancy in the places that they are, because they really do develop a good rapport with students and, and guide them on a path that's right for them, um, uh, you know, as they consider where they're going after Middletown High School. So that's one of the things that I know as a building administrator. And just to chime in on that, the... I'm sorry, just to chime in on that, the, um, we had um, a student, ironically, recently that um, which shows, it shows you how the staff supports the rigor of our um, academics. We had one student that, um, that messaged us that said, um, that thanked one of our teachers for preparing them for a high level math class at Brown University. Um, it was rigorous, um, it was difficult, but the support and the, the ability for that student to get through that next level at that college was, was priceless. So that just ironically came in last week. So this kind of ties into what I just had started to describe is, is what do we consider Islanders? So here are some of our core competencies that really drive what we do at Middletown High School, um, especially in the context of our career and technical education programs. So we pride ourselves at Middletown High on being reflective innovators and really asking questions and actively thinking about how the things that we learn in, in classes and what we teach and in the discourses and conversations that we engage in, how they matter to people right now. So a lot of the things that you learn at Middletown High School will be in the context of how do you make a difference with these types of, of you know, are these pieces of knowledge right now in the situation that you're in as a 15, 16, 17, 14 year old person? Um, and what types of major differences can you make on the world right now? Not five years from now, not 10 years from now, um, but with the skills and the thoughts that you have right now, there's a lot to offer. In addition to being reflective innovators, we're really proud of ourselves as productive collaborators. Um, we try to pride ourselves on a culture of collaboration as opposed to competition. Mr. Soares did talk about athletics earlier in the program and we absolutely love and value our athletics and extracurricular activities. Um, and, and you know, we really, we are successful in those endeavors, which I'm proud to say. Um, but in the classroom, it, it's all about helping one another figuring out a higher level of learning and collaboration so that we can collectively understand not only what's going on, but how it can be applied to the real world. In addition to pro uh, productive collaborators, we also consider ourselves to be global citizens. Um, as Mr. Williams just mentioned, we do have a relatively diverse population of students and learners um, in the building. We try to honor those cultures. Um, our world language department in particular does a really nice job at looking at um, supplementary activities that they can utilize um, and also not only supplementary activities but activities that can be infused into the gen general curriculum so that we can you know really school our students and our school community on the varied ways of life and, and how we can be empathetic um, but also value the others and the way that they live um, so we really try to encourage students to walk in walk in the shoes of other populations in addition to that, um, we have motivated and engaged learners at Middletown High School. Um, we really push our students in our programs, um, no matter the track or course level, um, to, to emphasize the skills that students can display and give them multiple opportunities to be successful. We try to be super accessible with our kids. Um, so that means, I mean, right, right up to me, if a student needs to walk into the principal's office, it's a matter of going up and speaking to the secretary and walking back to my office. Um, I try to keep my door open for students as much as possible. Um, and then also there's the electronic component now where we are a one-to-one -one school. Every student does receive a laptop 
um, upon entry to Milltown High School, um, and teachers, administrators, department directors, guidance counselors, support staff are all just a click away now via email. Um, and that's another thing as a school community, we actually do a really nice job of um, is, is communicating with our students via email in a timely fashion and an appropriate fashion. In addition to being motivated or engaged learners, um, we're also effective communicators. And we really try to encourage, like I had said, around the global citizenship component, um, you know, learning from each other and each other's lived experiences, whether that means it's a student that is from another country, a student from another state, school district, or your next door neighbor. Um, really understanding and, and walking in the shoes of others and then being able to communicate your, your lived story and messages um, in the context as well of what you're learning in classes and in school and the skills, trades, and, and aspirations that you might have in your life. Um, those are all things that we really try to infuse through our academic program and place, place heavy emphasis on. So in regards to career and technical education, how do some of those things translate? Um, in our career and technical education classes, we really encourage mastering the same software programs used by industry leading professionals. We're a Project Lead the Way school. Project Lead the Way is a curricular institution um, that oversees a lot of career and technical education across the entire country. Um, there's a rigorous training program that teachers have to go through to be PLTW teachers that all of our PLTW teachers have gone through um, and have mastered the coursework and content. Um, in addition to that, that level of teaching and that high level of pedagogy, we also deliver the materials that students need to be successful in those classrooms. So that could be high powered technology and software programs, which some of our, our actual departmental teachers will speak about a little bit later, um, or some of the hands-on materials, as you can see Mr. Douglas here working in his biomedical class. Um, showing just some of the things that they do in that realm. And then also, um, as evidenced by our 3D printer here, this is just one of many that we have throughout the high school. Um, we always try to annually upgrade our technology to ensure that um, you know, our students are having real life hands-on experiences. I'd alluded earlier to the fact that um, you know, Facebook wasn't a thing when I was in middle school and high school, yet when I graduated high school, um, that was the primary job and the highest paying powered job that students around the country were going into. Um, things like 3D printing allow us to get ahead of that curve and really consider how we utilize these machines in our engineering programs in, co in combination with our you know, computer science initiatives and things of that nature. Um, we really try to, like I said, place added emphasis on updated equipment and, and getting those things into the hands of students so that we can work in real life experiences. This is a draft of our four year program planning guide. So what I have on the screen right now is a little bit different than what you might've seen on our school website. We're collaboratively working on this to make it a little bit more Middletown specific. Um, but if you do look at our school website, you may find a flow chart that displays similar information. These are our three main pathways that we offer here at Middletown High School. You'll hear more about them in a couple of minutes. Um, our newest program is up top here in the gray, the biomedical pathway. Um, second to that is our second newest program, which has been around for a little while, but is still in fledgling stages, is our computer science pathways. And I say plural pathways because Ms. Larson and Ms. Sullivan McEwen will talk a little bit more about that in a little while. And then finally, our engineering pathway is, is our oldest and largest pathway, but it's um, by no means old and outdated. It's, it's our largest, it's our most successful pathway. Um, it's also one of, one of the pathways that is the most well monetarily supported, um, specifically by federal funds and grant money. So just as an aside, um, we, we currently are putting in an order for 60 brand new computers, desktop computers, um, really high powered, fast functional devices so students can work on some of the up and coming engineering trends that we're seeing out in, in the world and be successful and seamless not like my internet was this afternoon i was just complaining to some of the other people on the screen that we were planning for this meeting and i was like ah, 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 stutter all the way um you know hopefully you know with the new equipment that we have in the high school i'm confident that we'll be able to execute those high level programs um, so here, are, like I said, are some of those programs we offer. Additionally, it should be noted that from left to right, each of our pathway programs here listed on this slide are four-year pathways. So the expectation would be that when a student enrolls into the program, whether that be freshman or sophomore year, 
um, you'll be taking these four courses if you're looking to receive that pathway endorsement and to reach kind of the pinnacle um, of, of that career and technical education program. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but in general, as I said, it's important to know if you do commit to a pathway, um, while that's nothing is written in stone, um, what you're essentially saying is that I am committed to following through with these supplementary courses, other than the core courses I'll need to graduate Middletown High School. I'm dedicating myself to these supplementary courses in a pathway so that I can receive an additional endorsement um, and additional accolades as I go through my high school career. Um, and we'll talk more about that. Okay. Turn it over to Mr. Source to speak a little bit more about the current um, health and direction of our programs at this point. Thank you, Dr. Heath. So the, the next two slides are, are snapshots of students that are enrolled in our program. So this particular slide displays how many students we have in our current engineering, computer science, and biomedical courses. So you're probably wondering about the years two and three and four for the biomedical and why there aren't any students in it as what's displayed in the boxes. This is a relatively new program. It's our first year into the program. So within the next three, four years, we're, we're forecasting a large amount of students to be, to be enrolled in that program because it's a very unique program, uh, especially to, to the side of the East Bay. There aren't any other high schools I'm aware of that offer this program on the East Bay. But it's just starting out in the start out this year, and you can see we have 64 students enrolled in that course. <clears throat> our engineering course is strong, uh, engineering pathway is strong in our computer science program. We're starting to build it up, as you can see, it increased this year, 16 students in year one, in comparison to, to, the, to the years before. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So going to the next slide. So this, the difference between this slide and the previous slide is that this, this slide displays the number of students that have committed to the pathway. So a student can take a course within a pathway as an elective, that's fine. But in order for a student to fulfill a pathway and receive the seal, uh, they have to, well, they have to fulfill all four courses. So these students, so for example, are, are, we have 14 students that have committed to the pathway that enrolled in the first year, one student in year two, no students in year three, and we have four in year four, and so forth, 23 for computer science and 17 for biomedical. So we're growing, we're growing, we're, 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 rel we're relatively uh, a newer CTE program, but we're growing. And the reason why we're growing is because we want to take our time in building these pathways to make sure that they were correctly done and the curriculum was on point. We had, we had the staff uh, on board to do that. And, and we, we can safely say we have that now. We're proud of it. And the people that we have teaching these courses are trained. They're trained by Project Lead the Way. They're, they're all certified in Rhode Island. And uh, they all have a background in what they're teaching as well. So we're extremely fortunate to have these individuals teaching these courses in our building. Um, now I'm gonna turn over to Dr. Heath. Uh, I believe, Doctor, or, or is it Mr. Oliveira? I can't remember. It's actually me, Mr. Source. Mr. Ola so, so I'm going to turn over to Mr. Oliveira. Mr. Oliveira oversees all the coursework uh, that's that's being done. So, Doctor, he takes care of the CTE portion, the signups, and then Mr. Oliveira takes takes care of the curriculum, the teaching, the scheduling process, and and how those courses are are aligned. So, uh, Mr. Oliveira, go ahead. Thank you. As well as Mr. Zam, who um, handles the biomedical side um, of the pathway. I oversee the computer science and the engineering. So welcome. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to showcase what we're very, very proud of, which is our pathway programs, as well as all the other programs that we have in our school. A very supportive school that looks out for all students. So thank you for the opportunity. So why would you want to sign up for a pathway? Well, there are a lot of reasons, and I could go on and on and on, but I'll just highlight some of the, um, the, the more important reasons. One is that you're going to, if you sign up, for example, for the engineering pathway, you can um, take care of your graduation requirement, your capstone graduation requirement, um, which is similar to a senior project. The way the program works is you develop you take your courses, you develop your skills, and then as a collaborative group, you build something, you design, build, and execute that plan. And then you also have to present your plan to a group of judges. So that capstone project is actually embedded in the 
um, engineering and design development course, which is the capstone course um, for the engineering pathway. Another reason is just access to cutting edge technology and resources. Every year we are getting more and more resources um, from laser engravers to routers to mills to all kinds of tech, uh, computer technology um, that will give you the ability to try out those skills that you're learning to see some of the things that are being used in the, um, in the work world of the future and being able to do that in a collaborative environment. Additionally, just the opportunity to have field experiences. We're currently working on our work-based learning opportunities, making connections with, with businesses and companies to give you those experiences, as well as field trips that our teachers um, take students on to have you see what's out there and have you experience some of the real world um, activities. We have um, CTE endor endorsement on diplomas, which means you are certified as having completed the program. Currently, our computer science pathway and our engineering pathway are state approved CTE endorsed courses. We will be looking to have our biomedical program be state endorsed as well in the near future. And last but not least, we're going to now have a chance to hear from the actual people that are in the field teaching these courses and um, helping your children to, to participate in these pathways. Who's up first? I think it's Mr. Waite. Mr. Way, you're on stage. Uh oh, did we lose the, Mr. Way? Oh, so unmute, Mike is uh, unmute me. Unmute me now. That sounds good. All right, as everybody as everybody can tell, we have a lot of fun in this school, um, and we want to teach in the engineering section. We want to teach enduring understanding and a building process. We want to teach that you're coming together, working together. They work in different different groups. Sometimes it's a project with two person. Sometimes it's a project with four people. Uh, they put together they, their strengths and their weaknesses. They learn to work together and collaborate with their ideas. Uh, they work with decision-making rubrics to, to make a fair and, uh, and equal judgment when they come to a, a question or something they're working on. And uh, so they deal with uh, 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 introduction to engineering. That's a fun class to start out. Gives you a little bit of everything. Uh, they do next we go to a principles of engineering and principles of engineering is fun and a lot of these programs deal with things that just in, that they're not used to and building with programs and it's a lot of hands-on physical fun stuff um, so they deal with mechanisms materials structures automation motion and you know drawing and design and a lot of different types of uh, software programs we have uh, a CNC router we have a laser cutter uh, we have, uh, like Mr. Heath, Dr. Heath said before, we probably have 10 uh, 3D printers in a building and we all use them and we all build the principles and, uh, and practices and deal with it. So when they come to a different program, they, they feel good about it. Um, we have uh, CEA, Civil Engineering and Architecture, and Civil Engineering and Architecture is the fun thing. The good thing about that, that this year, or the, the funny thing about it, is that um, my engineering design development kids Three out of the four kids want to be civil engineers, so we're working on a, we're working on a, a partnership with a, a, a engineering firm called Failing, and um, they gave an interview to our kids the other day to tell them what is it like, what's a day in. The kids made up questions, and they got to go through that, and they seem to be interested and in having a lot of fun with that. In the engineering design development phase for the last four years, the first year we did a project called the Defender. The Defender was was brought out by a lot of school incidents that were happening so the kids thought like what could they do to make a difference and they developed a, a locking mechanism for the door uh once we get once you walk over to the door in in less than five seconds i can lock that door down you can't get in so the kids did a great job and they were real proud of that the second year what they did is they did a remote control uh cooler for the beach uh that <laughs> that was kind of a nice track drive remote control, go out on the beach and bring their drinks out to the beach with them when they come through. And they love that. Uh, the third year, they did a lot of development work and they did on uh, biodegradable paper and cups because they thought the environment 
Um, if Vitamin had a lot of problems and they wanted to get rid of some of them if they could. Uh, this year, they're dealing with uh, homeless shelter and, and green energy concepts that if we had something that was on the island and we had some type of problem on the island, we could take and set them up in different places. And so they're working on like, how would you do it? Who would you contact? How do you get the word out? Uh, how much would it cost to get it done? Compare it to a lot of other, lot of other things that are on the, on the internet and on the news. And we're always watching, uh, you know, developing and, and going on from, uh, from that one. So we want them to be innovative in what they do. And the kids come with great ideas. And uh, in the EDD thing, um, it's all I do is facilitate their work. They sit down, they get the mechanics going, what do you want? I help guide them and answer a question that they ask, but it's all on them. So they did all the work at the beginning for the during understanding piece as they go through. They come out with that and they say, this is what I'm going to do as a group, as a decision-making matrix. They sit down and go through it. This is what I have to have. This is the direction we're going to go. What do you think, Mr. Waite? Or who should I contact? Or how should this system work? Um, so there's a lot of investigative part to that. That's their culminating event, their capstone, so to speak, and they seem to have uh, uh, a lot of fun with that. Uh, if you could give me the next slide. All right, in, in dealing with over here, you're dealing with a lot of places, a lot of colleges are gonna give you credit for what you did. The kids realize that as they go through those other classes, they're gonna need the engineering notebook to develop their ideas. They develop their ideas, um, they share and compare, they date the data so they can have proof. If they come out with a, um, something that would, uh, would, would be uh, game changing, that they can prove they did it, they get it signed and, and, and backed up. So that would be more of a legal factor. They know how the system works um, and they feel part of it. When they go into the different, different schools, which, uh, which, which honor, honor the, the program, um, they're gonna, obviously we talked before, they're gonna be able to save money. They're gonna feel good about themselves when they come in. Uh, we had somebody from iRobot come uh, last year, and we were talking about the engineering notebook. Some of the kids are like, does the engineering notebook make a difference? And uh, he went to his bag, pulled out his engineering notebook. It wasn't even planned. It was like, okay, that's the way we go. Um, so we're on top of things. We stay after it. We work together. We have fun. We build e each other's skills back and forth. We take the best idea. The best idea is not is not what, what any one person says. The best idea is all their information put together, voted on, and they decide which way to go. Awesome, thank you, Mr. Waite. Um, and as you heard Mr. Waite allude to earlier on, each of the pathways, part of the endorsement process um, to be an endorsed pathway by the Department of Education is that students need a culminating uh, internship style experience where they get some real world hands-on skills. Um, so Mr. Waite had mentioned he has a lot of great networking con uh, connections as many of our uh, pathway teachers do. Um, so he's working with, with Fairlane at the moment um, on some civil engineering projects. Um, one of the things that we're working on administratively in the program uh, is to get some long-term partnerships uh, with some of the talented businesses and institutions that we have surrounding our school. We're super lucky um, to be located in the place that we are, not only for engineering, but for computer science and biomedical as well. Um, so as you can see on the screen right here, here are some of the local institutions that we're working with on potentially establishing a longer term relationship with. Uh, just to be clearly transparent, again, alluding to the fact that we are fairly new into the CTE game, um, these are not solidified at the moment, but they're all ongoing discussions and conversations. So with Raytheon, um, Defense Technologies located right down the road, as well as the United States uh, Naval War Academy. Um, these are two partnerships that we're really looking to leverage hev uh, heavily and to consider what can work for them, but also what can work for us. We also have some local institutions that highly value engineering programs, computer science and biomedical programs, um, not the least of which are some of our local institutions like Rhode Island College and the University of Rhode Island. Um, we also are lucky enough to have Southern Regina University, a private university in Newport right down the road um, that does sponsor many of these programs as well at their level. Uh, so we're really looking to creatively you know, establishing partnerships with post-secondary institutions, but also real world businesses that are involved in this work. So more to come on these fronts, um, but I'm super optimistic and excited about the direction that, that these emails and phone conversations have been heading in the, in the months leading up to this presentation. Uh, that being said, I'm going to turn it over to our computer science programs. Ms. Sullivan McCune can start first, um, followed by Ms. Larson a little bit later. Okay, hi. 
say yes for everyone. Okay, I think a lot of times people don't think of where you find computer science. Computer science, computers, computer science, and technology are found in many different areas. They're used in art, music, film, math, science, philosophy, uh, psychology, sociology, math, and almost anything you can think of. And it is integrated into every aspect of our daily life. So we really never feel the total impact. So what I'm going to do right now is just kind of show you the effect of computer science on everything and how it's changing things. So if you could just play and we'll watch it for a few minutes. This I think 19th century was about the industrial revolution, about electricity, about disrupting the agricultural society and making it more advanced. The 20th century was about physics and engineering to do more things easier in our everyday life from refrigerators to washing machines. How convenient. And the 21st century is definitely the digital age. It's the internet. Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball um, or, uh, you know, build a house, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. The Lettuce Bot is a robot that can sense its environment. Every single hour, this Lettuce Bot is seeing 1.5 million plants and it's taking individual action on those plants. We enable lettuce growers to have higher yields in their field by helping make it cheaper, by helping produce food in a more sustainable way. And that wasn't previously possible without computer science and technology. I have a really fun job where we build Polyvore, which kind of combines all my favorite things, so programming as well as fashion and art and design and shopping. <laughs> Half the products you use these days are software products that you play with on maybe your phone, and so if you want to build something cool, you need to know programming, right? And there's so many things that you can do with computer science. So if you just work backwards from the cool thing that you want to build and figure out what that is, a lot of times computer programming is part of that, right? So you should learn the skill. It's really exciting right now. The technology that we're developing right now is going to be used by your doctor in, you know, in the next decade. When you come into the office and you're sick, now the doctor is going to be like, all right, you know, spit in this cup. <laughs> and I will put it into this magic machine, which is the sequencer. And in an hour, I can tell you what you have or what's wrong with you. So if we're looking for a new virus, for example, we'll download a database of all the viruses that are known and we'll search for you know our sequence of interest against a whole database of all viruses so you still need somebody to analyze the data <laughs> the computer is not smart enough yet <laughs> our software helps people save energy and thereby reduce their carbon emissions to date we've saved over eight terawatt hours which is the equivalent of about 1.1 million cars on the road when you're forecasting the wind, there's so many different parameters that go into it. It would be impossible for a human to sit down and do all those calculations. We need a computer model in order to forecast it. I write software which scans images. Looking for bad images, images that we know are illegal. I work very closely with organizations like the National Center for Missing Children. I know that the work that we've done has impacted the life of people. And I feel very strongly about it because there's a lot of social problems right now that could really leverage the use of technology. It's a lot about empowering the people who are there helping the world by giving them the tools to be able to do better. That's something that we can do right now and the tools available are huge. The merging of art and technology is getting more and more significant now. Because computers and software are such an integral part of our lives day to day, people are realizing that it can be quite creative to take this medium of computers and create incredible works of art. 
In Finding Nemo, when Crush and Squirt and all the friends are flying through the East Australian Current, you're seeing images of water flowing by, you're seeing the colors on the back of the turtle, you're seeing the sides of the fish. All of those things are generated through math and computer programs that we write that we then give to the artists and they take that to, to create that final image and tweak it and make it look beautiful and look fun. The crux of it is really about invention. It's about looking at the world and, and being dissatisfied with things and questioning everything. I always felt like if I didn't learn how to program, it, it would be like not learning how to read. You know, the, the, the future would just be closed to me. If you're in the coding profession, there's so many things that you can do and you can pretty much pick and choose the course you want to be in. I think that I mean, you can start something in you know, your college dorm room and you can have a set of people who haven't built a big company before come together and build something that a billion people use as part of their, their daily lives is, is just crazy to think about, right? It's really, it's humbling and it's amazing. Really, it's about the chance to reinvent things and then see it out there in the world and see people using it and having fun or having a better life because of something that wasn't there before that you put in the world. You. Okay, one of the things that I want you to be thinking about is why is computer science important? And it's like during the last year we've had a pandemic and we have learned the importance of computers and computer science in our life. Computers connect us to virtual classrooms, work, our friends, relatives, and events in the world. This year for me this was really important. Before, right before the pandemic started in March, I went out to meet my one month old grandson. I have yet to see him in San Francisco. I saw him for four days and I cannot wait to see him again. And thanks to FaceTime, photos, the phone, all different kinds of uh, virtual, uh, virtual travel, so to speak, I can now see him grow. And, you know, I would just be amazed from one month to a year because tomorrow is his birthday and that's why I'm thinking of it. Um, I want you to think, they're used to collect data, okay? And I use certain things in this because I thought they collect data to track the coronavirus, data to design vaccines. They use the data to ensure the vaccine is safe. And that's just one teeny, teeny use. They use data for everything. They're trying to improve our food. They're trying to improve our water. They're trying to improve the climate. They have to do this by gathering data. They go and they have another thing they do. Good and bad is computer science and algorithms can affect our lives in good and bad ways. You can use data to predict trends and you track our likes and dislikes. And in some ways, we might only see certain news, or we might see some product that they have decided that we want. And this is kind of a very interesting thing because sometimes they come up with the right thing, but it also sometimes tends to limit. So we have to always be conscious of what computers do in our life. And one of my feelings with my students, I'm always telling them to think about it, you know, you know, question AI, why do people think these things coming up are good? What do you think can be problems? In the courses I teach, they always ask, what's the benefit to society and what's the harmful effect to society? In the PLTW computer science pathway, we start off with computer science essentials. We go on to computer science principles. These two courses are great because they're kind of an overview. And we can really look at not just programming or coding, as everyone thinks computer science is. It's nice to know, but it's not the end all. There's computer science A, which makes us go deeper into it. And then I have cybersecurity. These are the four courses. And usually, you need to go at least with the first three in order. Cybersecurity. You can't do it a freshman year, but you could do it if you had um, in a sophomore or junior. If you can't do it, you might want to do it earlier because you don't need the programming that the other courses need. 
So if I take a look at this, it says computer science essentials, computer science principles, provide multifaceted introductions to computer science. And this is really important. Um, you know, I said people think about coding or um, programming as being the end all or the piece, but it's only a piece of the puzzle. It's about the internet. It's about how it came about. You know, it existed in the 60s, but no one had access to it. And it really became popular in the 90s when we started having graphic interfaces and we could see things rather than just have everything text driven. Protocols, number systems, and just much more. It's about collecting data, predictions, trending, algorithms, abstractions, and it just goes on. And it's about cybersecurity, learning about threats and how to keep your computers safe. And it talks about computers. So there's programming in computer essentials. They start looking at Python. When you take computer science principles, they cover all kinds of things. You do, um, you can look at machine learning and AI. You look at the internet. You look at um, data. You look at algorithms. You create, because it's an AP class, you create a program. And not only do you create it, you design it, you create it, and then you write about it. You show it and you discuss how you designed it, what are the algorithms, what are the abstractions, and you really get deep in why is, it, why is this computer program important? What does it do? And I will continue on with my other things. I teach cybersecurity, and this was one of the projects my, one of my students presented just recently, and I thought I would put it in. This is my presentation of the 1.3.1 Dangerous Situation Assignment. Now, starting off here, we're going to open up our Windows Firewall Settings. We're going to come down here, click this button here, type in Firewall. Now, you're going to notice here that all the protection is actually off, so what we're going to want to do here is just click it on. You want to make sure you hit Apply. If you just hit OK and Cancel or anything, it's not going to apply it. Now... Now that it's on as well, we can click out of here and we go to our cleaning app. And normally what this is, is when you have an antivirus and anti-malware protection on your computer that you bought, it usually installs something here that's like a malware cleaner. And all you do was you would analyze your computer, all your files, and then you just run the cleaner on it and it would automatically remove all the files. Now with this, this is just like a fresh computer with no files on it so of course there's not going to be any malware actually on it but um next you're going to want to come over here and you want to go to your local disk and here from the get-go there's a batch file that i don't really recognize so immediately i'm going to want to scan it just to make sure i'm not opening anything that's going to cause me to download viruses on to my pc so with this it says looks good no threats found but obviously this is not a real malware this is fake but it's just name suspicious but normally it would say this is malware or this is a threat or something along those lines and you just simply delete it now next we need to find out how this file even got on to the computer in the first place so i'm going to go down here to users and i see administrator and public and then one that I'm not even familiar with at all. So if you aren't really familiar with a user that has access to some of your files, like on your local disk, or on your D drives, or any types of drives that you have, hard drives, you're just going to want to immediately delete them because there's just, there's just no need. And that was my presentation of 1.3.1. Thank you. This is my present. And so that was one of my students' books. And I want you to be thinking about it since you're um, being um, in high school. We don't think about how much time because it thinks like we, we don't have enough time. But when you really start looking at all these people who have made businesses, big companies, they all started doing it in high school. 
when they had a lot of time. They went on the internet, they found free programs, they started programming games, they started writing, like Mark Zuckerberg started writing um, games for his sister, or I think, or, and Gates did something too. And so people started doing things on their own and then they got better and then they realized like if you were playing games, well, maybe I want to write, maybe I need a faster computer. How could I get a faster computer? I need, I need a graphic card and a fast processor. So maybe I should build it. So these are all things that trigger kids into doing more and more. I mean, I've had kids, this year we're not using it, but last year I would have kids that finished type of security and they would say, can I use the uh, 3D printer? And I said, sure, because they, be, they would have known CAD because they taught themselves CAD during one of the classes. So this is what I want to stress. Computer science, it's in everything that we do. You don't have to be a programmer. Maybe you like math. Maybe you want to do any kind of thing, you know, whether it's even sewing. You can sew LED lights into your clothes. So I want you to think about this. And my last thing is one of my students, I asked her, I said, tell me what you think about cybersecurity. So this morning, she was so thrilled. <laughs> cybersecurity is an important uh, class to be able to take. In this class, technology and innovation, not only is it important to have, I have to just skip protecting our internet, it's important to be able to grab kids. They're still discovering what they want to do and hopefully get young cybersecurity experts. I learned a lot about computers by securing them, hence the name cybersecurity. Even things like they should be common sense to people are things that I've had to learn or I never heard of. Even kids who have never had computer knowledge are learning and growing up. I hope very, uh, I'm very hopeful for the future of cybersecurity and innovation in the computer science field. As long as we go down this path of educating students in cybersecurity, computer science, and everything technology is based on. So my feeling is, I feel the proof this is my students. It's not me, it's their successes that makes me good. So now we'll hop on if Ms. Larson is on and would like to speak about the second prong of our computer science pathway, um, then Ms. Larson, feel free to jump in. Sure, thank you. Um, thanks, Mrs. McEwen. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about one of the other um, computer science pathways that we're um, beginning to start this year. Um, as Mrs. McEwen said, our goal at um, Middletown High School is really to get as many um, many people involved in computer science as early as possible. So this, um, this we, we were offered the opportunity um, to be in a research grant um, to test out some, uh, a different kind of pathway for getting more kinds of um, students involved. And this uh, CS4RI research grant has a goal actually of trying to t trying to see if it helps students become involved more and stay involved in computer science if they actually have a work based learning component. So we're part of a study and we're actually part of the control group. So we're not doing the work based learning first off, but we're going to have the opportunity to um, provide the work based learning course. Um, at the end of our um, at, a, at the end of our sequence, so the, this um, this pathway is really um, built to be um, accessible to a lot of people, and really like like um, we said, the goal is to um, broaden participation, try and get as many different kinds of students involved in computer science, people who never even thought that they would be interested in it people who never even gave a thought to computer science, but the goal is to get many people involved. Um, and so um, the courses are designed a little bit different than the Project Lead the Way courses in that um, they're, uh, um, the, the intro course is a quick 
um, quick dip into um, computing and data science where students will be um, building web pages and also analyzing data. So they're going to come out with skills who, that are um, valuable not only in this course, but also in uh, that they'll be able to use in other courses. Um, maybe they'll come up um, be in a, an English class or social studies or science and they'll um, need to sort of organize their information. They'll have, the, they'll have in their back pocket the knowledge of how to build a website. Maybe they're in, um, maybe they're in social studies or science or even math and um, they're, they're, they need to do some data analysis. Well, they'll have the, um, in their back pocket the ability um, through the computing and data science course how to know how to use Google Sheets and analyze data to sort it and search it, use pivot tables and all kinds of things like that. So the idea is to provide sort of usable skills and also a, a baseline of um, a baseline of learning. This court, this pathway also offers um, a similar um, computer science principles course as the um, PLTW pathway. Um, this one is like really designed more for like a broad range of um, students as is the um, Java, the deep dive Java class. Um, the other advantages of this um, pathway are that um, there are opportunities for um, concurrent enrollment at URI. So each of the three courses, um, the first three courses in the sequence um, allow students to be um, concurrently enrolled at URI and earn four credits um, for the course. So that, so, um, they don't need to pay for the courses. The state, it's, it's um, paid for by the state. So the um, students are, uh, uh, like uh, Dr. Heath said at the beginning, able to earn um, four credits through their, um, through their coursework um, for free. Um, the other thing is if, the, if they don't choose to do concurrent enrollment, they can still, um, they can still take the AP test and get um, credit that way. All of the AP tests, people in the pathway for this course, the AP tests are, fees are covered. So they don't need to, um, they don't need to pay for the AP um, test. And then finally, um, the last course, the work-based learning course, students will have the opportunity um, to um, do a work-based learning project with people from industry in their senior year. So those are some of the, um, so, the, um, so, that, so just a little bit about the courses. Again, um, I said uh, a little bit earlier that students have the, um, some of the uh, uh, goals of the, the initial course are really to get um, people interested in computer science and have them, um, have them stick with it. Um, the, one of the things that students will be um, building in the, in the course is a, uh, two of the things actually are a travel, a website um, based on some place that they decide that um, they, they might want to showcase that you might want to travel to. And the other thing is a data story where they're given a, a big data set and they have to come up with a big, um, a big question about uh, that they think that they can answer through um, analyzing the data. And then they go through it, go through the entire step of uh, steps of um, analyzing the data from um, uh, sorting it and cleaning it. Um, using uh, uh, visualizations to make charts and graphs, using pivot tables to summarize the data. Um, all of the different kinds of things that, that you do that a real data scientist would do um, to sort of come up with, to analyze data, to come up with an answer to a big data question. And they do this all, they do, they do this um, actually collaboratively. Um, people work in pairs and um, work together to try and come up with an answer and build a, a Google um, slideshow and present it. And um, the AP Computer Science Principles um, course introduces students to um, the foundational concepts of computer science as well and challenges them to explore how computing and te technology can impact the world. It's meant to be an inviting introduction to computer science for a diverse population of students by providing broad appeal and breaking down stereotypes about what it means to be a computer scientist and what it means to do computer science. So 
um, the, the goal of this course is really to um, provide opportunities for um, students to learn um, the different computer science concepts and um, to build confidence and to see themselves as computer scientists, not to, um, not to um, think that it's for somebody else, but really um, the goal is to get everybody um, involved and successful. Um, one of the other things that um, we're excited about at Middletown is all of the different electives that we offer. And this is, um, we, we offer like a, a wide variety of um, different electives. Just so that everybody has a chance to give computer science a try, mo the, the courses are um, mostly easy entry and accommodate a wide variety of interests. So we have um, video game design, advanced video game design. We have a course called Apps for Good where students build, build apps. We have an introduction to Java. We have an e-textiles and wearable electronics course where um, students, um, as Ms. McCune said, build um, uh, wearable electronics where they sew, they can sew sensors and um, LEDs on, into clothing and control them with microprocessors. We have a web, a web design course and also a robotics course. This um, picture on the screen here is, a, um, is an example of something that someone um, built in the Apps for Good course and it's kind of, it's actually a um, it's actually a game, an app, an app game where um, students can sort of um, uh, get points by touching the coro coronavirus uh, um, little icon on the screen. And then um, when they win, um, they get taken to a screen that gives them all kinds of facts and um, information about, about the virus. So kind of a, um, it, it addresses a problem um, where um, students or people um, sort of might need to have um, be motivated to, to really learn um, information about a subject. So um, let me see. So really, so the idea behind all of the electives is um, really to give everybody the opportunity to sort of pick something um, that interests them. So it, it gives, it, there's a lot of different ways that you can, that in, um, computing is embedded in all of these different courses. And it, um, but it, it sort of it, um, appeals to different um, interests that um, every kind of person has. So we're really trying to get to everybody. We want people to take a computer science course, see themselves ex as successful as they're, while they're um, a student, while they're a young person, and think of it as an opportunity for them to expand and think about how they can um, use what they learned and um, build upon that and make something, um, make something that's usable for the world. So why are they, so, so as you can see, we have a lot of different um, computer science opportunities at Middletown. We've got the, um, the, the traditional PLTW pathway. We've got the CS for RI, the high school grant pathway. We've got a lot of electives and the electives can be taken in, you know, in conjunction with um, any of the pathways. So don't, you wouldn't, you don't have to feel like you can only take the pathway courses. Maybe um, you might be somebody who ended up taking a, an elective and said, wow, I didn't know that that was what computer science is. And hey, you know what, I'm good at it. Maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'll um, continue on. I'll take, a, um, take another course in, in one of the pathways or start up a pathway. Um, there are some, um, I think as Mrs. McCune said, some of the courses you can sort of take at the same time. Like you could take cybersecurity, at, you know, at the same time you took um, Java or CS principles. Um, but you know, so, so, there, so if you sort of jumped in at a little later date, there is a way that you can, um, you know, sort of uh, double up if you're a junior or senior and, and um, get a, you know, get a good, um, a good base of computer science. Um, so, really, our goal is to increase participation in, in CS. We want we want you to try it. We want you to do it. We want you to be successful. And um, then, and our strategy is right now where we have the PLTW pathway. We're participating in the CS for RI High School Research Grant, and um, we want to see how we can get the most people um, as and the most people participating 
at the most successful successful um, rate. So that's our goal. And then um, to sort, so, sort of try everything and um, offer as much as we can and try and get as many people interested. Because everybody, like, like uh, Mrs. McCune said, computer science is everywhere. It's going to, um, it's going to reach every aspect of your life. So um, it, it'll pop up no matter what you decide to um, major in in college. There, it's, you're almost guaranteed that you're gonna need to know a little bit of computer science to be the one that has a leg up on everybody else. Um, so, and then, um, like, like I said, um, we're, we're really, um, really keen on offering electives to let everybody um, try it out. Um, one thing and another one, one more point that I'd like to make about computer science is uh, this. So um, like Miss McCune said, it's a great time. It's a high school is a great time to try computer science. You might not um, like it might not be something that you continue on with in high school, in college or in your in your life later on, but it will be um, beneficial for you to actually know what computer science is all about and also to have the um, experience of solving um, programming and um, computer problems because it it really helps you um, expand your problem solving abilities um, because uh, really that's that's what a, that's what a computer program is it's a it's a problem to solve so it really um, it's a really good way to um, you know, to, to really build, um, build yourself, build your own abilities as a, as a person and as a, and as a problem solver. So I hope you're. Thank you, Ms. McEwen and, and Ms. Larson. Um, so to build on those, those real world partnerships, um, that we, we need to take a look at here. Um, again, being fairly early in the program, you'll notice there are some repeat customers here um, simply because we are situated in such a great place. In addition to the computer science partners um, that kind of echo the, the engineering pathway, um, we're also reaching out to the Ryan School of Design. We have some networking conversation there. And then um, also uh, New England Tech, that's what that paw print is there. And then Sinida, which is our content over at the Department of Education, has a strong tie to that organization. So we're hopeful to access and, and leverage some of those networking opportunities um, so that we can get our students those real world experiences um, on a more you know, consistent, solid basis from year to year. Um, we're getting those students' experiences now, but we like to build on what we're already doing. So that being said, we come to our final pathway, which is biomedical. So I'm just gonna take a quick look here um, at, our, at our invitees. I'm not seeing right now a biomedical representative. Um, I'd imagine Mr. Douglas probably got tied up. So that being the case, I can jump on. Um, biomedical is our newest pathway of the three. As Mr. Soros mentioned earlier, this is, um, we're in our first functional year of biomed. And what I mean by that is um, the previous two years were predominantly planning the pathway, um, starting to get us on a good solid foundation so that in the future we can have um, an endorsement seal through the Rhode Island Department of Education for biomedical. Uh, right now, like I said, we're kind of still in the test phases. Um, essentially, we do need another two years or so prior to being able to put that endorsement stamp on biomed. Um, but I do want to make sure that people know for certain that we're well on our way to that. Um, we're, we're meeting with check marks. Uh, this is by far and away um, our, our most explosive pathway. And what I mean by that is, as you could see earlier in the presentation, we have 64 students in four sections of the introductory biomedical course running right now. So principles of biomedical science, um, even prior to be honest with you, prior to COVID becoming a real kind of focal point of the media and daily conversation, um, this, this pathway was blowing up. Um, Mr. Soares alluded to it earlier as well, um, that in our area, this is a unique program for us in our area of the state. There are no other biomedical programs. Um, it is a PLTW program, as is our uh, part of our computer science pathway and engineering pathways. Um, so we get a lot of high, high quality advanced technical tools that come along with biomed um, that students really get to dive in with. So 
the course that's currently running is Principles of Biomedical Science. Um, and I'm seeing Mr. Zom popping on right now. He's our, he's our science department director. So Mr. Zom, would you like to jump in and take on a little bit of some of the well, biomedical? I'll try. I've been here the whole time. Uh, we Sorry, just I didn't through, see you. It's in the beginning that he, he couldn't, like, I just heard right before. So, okay. um, no worries. I apologize. Yeah. I just love talking. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, the, the thing about this course is, you, you know, you can read the slide, um, but there isn't much that's more interesting uh, to high school students than learning how their bodies work. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking about that. It's, it's a fantastically interesting, complex system. Um, and, and we have biology that learns how biology in general works. And we have a physiology class that is how the body systems are organized and where they are. Um, but this course is about how does science understand how those systems work together. Um, if you saw me waving, I've got a little stretchy thing on my hand. I was bitten by a cat two months ago. Um, and I'm, I'm still recovering from it. And I've been fascinated every doctor's appointment as we're talking about how those little points of impact have spread around and caused different health things in my, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, but different problems in my, in my hand and in my, in my uh, muscular system and my nervous system and stuff. It's looking at how those systems go together. So I, I think the thing that for all of the classes and especially this one, they're really cool classes. They're interesting things for kids to learn about. Um, they're designed well with their audiences my, in mind. Um, Principles of biomedical science is about how we know stuff um, and how we can learn about what we're looking at biologically in a scientific manner. Um, I think about, you know, when I watch a CSI or an NCIS show and there's always all these dramatic people standing around. And the best part to me is when they go into the morgue and they talk to the doctor about how they knew that he died at 7 p.m. and not 5 p.m. They know how the systems work together. So that's principles of biomedical science and that's human body systems. Um, the second half of the courses are gonna be getting into the actual medical part. Um, I know I didn't, I just found out he wasn't gonna be here so I didn't get to prepare this, to put the slides in detail, I'm sorry. Um, but I know this, the, the ending parts, the, the third and fourth year are more about how we intervene technologically on medical interventions and um, you know, looking at synthetic materials that we can use in the body. Um, I can't, prosthetic arms, prosthetic hands, and stuff like that. It's learning how those work. Um, I, you know, I hope that we can tie this in with our computer science pathways so that, you know, when I retire, they can replace me with a robot as a class project. Um, but we'll have, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, Mr. Douglas has been super enthused about teaching this class, um, and they set him up. I, I don't even want to give it away with, a, with an, opening, uh, an opening day hook. Um, but their whole goal is to say, there's not much cooler than the human body. Um, and, and we're going to teach you about it in a, a, as non-dry a way as we possibly can. Um, so I you know, hope you guys sign up. Plus, science is better than computer science. Go biology. That's why we're the top on that wave. I was waiting for it to get competitive. Everybody was <laughs> behaving up until that point. So yeah. right. we're not going to favor either one. We're just going to schedule. <laughs> So um, I know we're coming up right on 730 and that was our initial um, deadline. I want to just um, I wanna politely ask if people can hang around for another five to 10 minutes max, um, just to be respectful of people's time. We're coming to the end of the presentation, um, but I do want to get to some of the logistical components. So similar to the other two pathways, um, we are talking about um, research and innovative um, internship opportunities with some of our surrounding uh, healthcare facilities as well as universities. Um, so again, leveraging those partnerships to hopefully get our students um, as our biomedical pathway matures um, into some real life settings to do some, some really cool stuff, hands-on and otherwise. Um, in, in addition to the three pathways that you've heard about, hopefully you've, you've heard some of the enthusiasm that our teachers have, and, th and these are just representatives from the departments, um, strong representatives, albeit, um, but we definitely have more teachers that are involved with this program and everybody, including me, is super excited about the direction of, of where our CTE program at Middletown is going. Um, in addition to, to the pathways themselves and the good stuff that's already going on that you're hearing about, um, we're also looking this year in particular to start to venture um, into some other creative ways. So uh, COVID's really started us thinking about our internship opportunities and work-based learning opportunities and how we might be able to utilize those. Um, 
if say we're not able to get into a site or if something like COVID knock on wood, hopefully never happens again. But if God forbid something did come down the pike like this, um, we're looking into virtual reality opportunities um, and using 360 degree cameras to, to potentially create our own videos, um, both in the building and on out of building work sites and to, to collaborate with local businesses to see if we can maybe make some of those training opportunities. I think that's an exciting thing that we've begun to talk about um, just over the course of the last month. In addition to that, we're talking about federal funds being used to upgrade our technology. I alluded to our engineering computers before. That's also true of our computer science computers. We're, we're putting in a large order to upgrade those um, so that they can be state of the art. And then also we're looking into platforms, creative graphic design platforms like Adobe um, to help, help with our graphic design component of things and the artistic version uh, or vision with engineering, um, biomedicine and, and computer science. And then we've talked a lot about real world internship opportunities as being a major focal point of where we're at with the program. So if any of the things that you've heard tonight interest you, um, and you don't even have to be sold 100%, but if you wanna hear more, or if you wanna have more of a close close one-on-one -on -one conversation, um, my email is listed on this slide, as is our guidance clerk, Ms. Heather Richardson. She's not here tonight, but she would be your contact person at guidance. Um, and then also our main office phone number, which is kind of the central hub number for our building, um, which from that point can connect you to our guidance department, to me directly, to Mr. Soares, um, or any individual teacher for that matter. Um, we have an online sign up pathway form. I understand that this is a webinar format, so it's not clickable right now. Um, but soon after this presentation, most likely tomorrow, if not two days from now, um, this presentation as well as um, the actual slide deck will be located on our school website. Um, and these links will all be clickable for you to access our, our application. Should you be somebody that says, listen, I'm sold. I wanna be in biomedicine or I wanna be in computer science or engineering. Um, you can click right on that link and you can start the application process from there. Um, some caveats or some details for in, in district and out of district students. If you're a Middletown Public High School student, the way that our program was constructed is you have first dibs. Um, so if you're a Middletown student currently, um, or you're coming up from Gaudet School, um, you're, you would apply to the program. Shortly thereafter, you'd receive an acceptance letter. You'd work closely with our guidance department to make sure that the courses that you need are lined up, um, and then we would go from there. Uh, it's important to note that if you are a student or a family that's looking for special education services, um, there's a little bit more legwork, I guess you would say, that needs to go into that course scheduling procedure. Um, so that's just something to keep on your radar. Um, because we are a small school and students are only capable of taking seven courses um, within their, their schedule rotation, uh, sometimes there's some fancy footwork that needs to be, you know, planned out um, to make sure that students are getting all of their needs um, met academically and also eligible to, to make it into the pathway and, and accurately be able to do that. So um, those might be a little bit more extensive conversations, but they're possible conversations. And we do have students that receive those services and are involved in our pathways. So that's something that we can talk through. Um, if you're an out-of-district student, a uh, little bit of a different process, although similar, um, you would apply to the program. Um, you would receive your acceptance letter prior to March 31st. The reason why there's a little bit of a lag time is because um, dependent on the year and our program offerings, um, sometimes we do have lots of applicants and because priority preference is given to Middletown High School students first, um, we need to make sure that we have room and the capability of, of saying yes, you can come to the school and we can fulfill exactly what you're looking to fulfill. Um, so that's, that's the reason there's a little bit of lag time in there. Um, but you would receive an acceptance letter to our program um, by that date, at which time you would schedule a tour if you're interested and a conversation with our guidance department so that we can get you set up with the schedule. Um, and similar special education considerations apply. Um, if our programs reach capacity, um, there's a couple of options that we have in place. First, if you're a new applicant, you'd be asked if you'd like a second choice on our application. Um, we ask for your top two choices out of our three pathways. Sometimes students don't have a second choice and say, no, if it's, it's biomedical or bust. And that's okay, and that's fine. It's totally up to individual interest, um, but we do ask for a second choice. And if a program fills up, we do offer that option out to our students, both in, in district and out of district. Um, if everything fills up, 
and you are somebody who say applied to computer science, um, the fallback is a lottery system. So once we get the Middletown High School students enrolled, if there's 20 seats left per se in the program, then all the ping pong balls go into a bucket. We draw out 20 names at random. Those are the students that gain access and entry into those programs. The remaining students are still drawn out of the bucket, but then they're placed on a wait list in case somebody drops out or decides that they don't want to attend. Um, we then fill those seats. So that brings us to some frequently asked questions. Um, Mr. Soares and I will tackle these fairly quickly. Um, but again, these will be posted on the website in case you need to review afterwards. So Mr. Soares, you wanna chime in on this one? Sure, so just to be cognizant of people's times, so I'll, I'll go quickly with this. So a few, few uh, questions that we normally get asked. Uh, is, is there a cost of these programs? Is there a cost to attend this program? The answer is no. Uh, there's no cost incurred by the students and families. Middletown Public School students participate for free. For out-of-district students, the sending school will pay 100% of the attendance cost. Uh, in, in order to, to be considered a part of the program, the application process is a must. <clears throat> oh, go, go back one. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So if I'm attending from another school district, is, is transportation provided? Short answer is yes. If you live in either Middletown, Newport, Portsmouth, Little Compton, or Tiverton, which is considered District 5, uh, you, you'll, you'll be provided transportation. If you live outside these areas, students will still, uh, may still attend, but they will be required to, to provide their own transportation. And we do have on-site on parking for students who uh, have a license. So Dr. Heath and I got to go back and forth. So Dr. Heath is going to take this one. I got a little click happy on that one. It wasn't your fault, Mr. Soares. It was me. I got an itchy finger. Um, <laughs> second slide is uh, if you'd like to see the school before deciding, we do offer tours um, for safety purposes. We don't offer tours during the school day. However, we do offer tours directly after school. Um, if interested in receiving a tour, you have the phone number there. You also have the the email of my personal clerk, Ms. Sonia Sylvia. Um, tours are about 45 minutes long, although they can be customized to be shorter if need be. Um, but we do offer those for people who want to get a look inside the building. And then what time does school start and end? We open the doors at 7.15. First period starts at 7.30 and the final bell is at 1.40. If you're a student attending from out of district, um, you would be with us for the entire school day. It wouldn't be like a half day program. So once I choose a pathway, must I remain in that same pathway for all four years? So the short answer, so short answer uh, to that is it's recommended that you remain in that same path, pathway for four, all four years if you want to be considered to uh, be, a, be a recipient of, of, of the, the certified CTE. CS4RI, uh, computer science pathway is a little different. That doesn't fall in the PLTW uh, uh, realm of things. So that's a three-year requirement. But if anybody has any specifics regarding, regarding the particular or specific pathway, I would recommend uh, emailing uh, Dr. Heath or myself. Next up is if you're a public school student in another district, do you have to notify the community where you live to let the student, to, if you're a family, to let your student know or to let your community know, excuse me, that your student's coming to Middletown? Uh, because they're paying for it, yes, you do. Um, so essentially what that basically means is public school student wants to attend Middletown, um, you would apply, we would send you a letter of acceptance, you would present that letter to your school, and then you would be enrolled in the Middletown School District. Um, you, if you're just searching and, and kind of researching the idea, you do not have to share that with your school district. But one important thing to note is that your sending, sending district can't prevent you from coming. So many, many high schools around the state have a CTE program or multiple CTE programs. Um, it's a well-known procedure, this kind of choice option that goes on right now. Um, so you, the school that you're coming from cannot tell you no, essentially. So I'm a private, a private or homeschool student in another town. Do I have to notify the community where I live that I would like my student to attend the Middletown High CTE program? And the answer is yes. If you decide to submit a formal application to our CTE program, uh, your town's public school sending district will need to know so they can cover the costs. So if you're exploring this option of attending, you will not need to notify your district. Please note that your sending district cannot prevent you from attending our CTE program if you make that choice.
And that brings us to the end. So I appreciate people staying 10 minutes later. I know we ran a little bit over. Um, if there are people in the audience that would like to stick around um, and have a conversation a little bit more, you know, or ask some questions, feel free. Um, if you want to kind of chew on some of the presentation that we gave tonight, um, you have contact information both to myself and to uh, the principal's clerk, Ms. Sonia Sylvia, um, there as well. And we can get you in touch with the appropriate people in the building. Um, but at that point, if there are people that do want to ask questions, feel free to throw them down in the chat. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for attending. Thank you for your time. Hopefully we hear from you in the future. And if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out. So thanks, thanks for the time. Stay safe, stay healthy, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everyone. You take care. So for our panelists, we'll just wait a minute or two for some, some conversation in the chat. I see a couple of questions coming up right now. Um, can, from Ms. Baker, can a sophomore student that's in CS4RI research grant pathway move into the PLTW pathway in their junior year and be on track with all of the classes? That's an awesome question. Um, that's something that, that we'll need to consider in-house, both in-house and to speak to our URI contacts about. Um, there are very similar entry level courses in both pathways, um, but there is some, some deviation between the two. So um, we can definitely, Ms. Baker, get back to you on that conversation. Um, that hasn't been something that's been decided for or against yet. Um, awesome question. It's a really, really good question. So I'll write that down right now. Um, great. Uh, next question, same, it's from Ms. Baker once more. Where and when would a student move on to or into a real world experience. So generally speaking, our real world experiences occur um, in that fourth year of the program. So as a student kind of closes uh, you know, on the end of their programming, um, students would then have those work-based experiences. We've had a really difficult time with that this year because of COVID. So um, you know, it's kind of a, a blessing and a curse that we're fairly new to the CTE game. Um, blessing in the sense that we don't have so many people that are at the higher end, so we don't have to look for extensive um, you know, placements, but as Mr. Waite had mentioned earlier, uh, we do have a lot of, you know, in-house networking opportunities um, where he had mentioned Fairlane in particular, um, you know, where for civil engineering, we can definitely have kids participate in those, those types of um, programs. Um, one, of the, one of the curses to being a new program is that we're still in the process of establishing some of those strong relationships with, you know, the Salve Regina universities of the world and the, the War College, et cetera. Um, so uh, there's still a lot of opportunity to make those partnerships right now. Um, and we definitely, you know, encourage the community if they have any ideas or places that they think we need to get in contact with to, to give us a shout out and we'll gladly send an email and schedule a meeting. Um, but right now, um, we're looking generally at post-secondary institutions like universities, local universities. We're looking at hospitals for things like biomedicine um, and pharmaceuticals. Um, and then in regards to computer science, it's, it's as Ms. Larson and Ms. McEwen said, the world's kind of our oyster. Um, Raytheon is a great place to look for for that, um, as well as some other um, computer science specific local businesses. Great. Any other questions in the chat? Okay. I think we're good. Great. Thank you so much, Ms. Baker. Thank you so much, everybody else that attended. I appreciate the panelists for being on, everybody giving us a couple extra minutes. And, uh, you know, let's go Islanders, right? Let's, let's, let's roll into the future and keep the CTE program going. Everybody's doing an excellent job. And we look forward to enrolling students near and far. <laughs>